Welcome to our lecture online. There are two factors that affect the change in the wavelength of a scattered photon. The first one is the mass of the particle off of which the photon scatters. As you can see that the difference in the wavelength, the wavelength of the outgoing photon minus the wavelength of the incoming photon is equal to Planck's constant divided by the mass of the particle times the speed of light. The larger this particle, the smaller the change in the wavelength, the smaller this particle, the larger the change in the wavelength. But there's another factor, the scattering angle of the photon. You can see here that the difference in the wavelength is also a factor of 1 minus the cosine of that scattering angle. What does that mean? Well, let's take a closer look. If the scattering angle is 0, then we can see that the change in the wavelength is equal to, again, h over m sub naught times c, times 1 minus the cosine of 0, which of course the cosine of 0 is equal to 1, which means that this is equal to h over m sub naught c times 1 minus 1, or equal to 0. If the scattering angle is 0, then the change in the wavelength of the incoming photon and the outgoing photon is zero. There's no change in the wavelength because there has been no, no uh, change in the energy. In other words, no energy was imparted to the electron and the photon just keeps on going. In other words, there was no effect, no interaction between the photon and the electron. If the scattering angle was measured to be 90 degrees, and of course it can be anywhere between 0 and 90 degrees, but simply for an example, then you can see that the change in the wavelength is equal to h over m sub dot c times 1 minus the cosine of 90 degrees. Well, the cosine of 90 degrees is 0. That means that this is equal to h divided by m sub naught c times 1 minus 0, or simply h divided by m sub naught c. The difference in the wavelength will be equal to this quantity h over m sub naught times c. And finally, let's say that the photon scatters all the way back in the opposite direction from where it came from, that the angle is 180 degrees. The cosine of 180 degrees is negative 1, which means that this is equal to h divided by m sub naught c times 1 minus a minus 1, which means that it's going to be twice h over m sub naught c. Notice how the change in the wavelength keeps on getting bigger and bigger and bigger as the scattering angle gets bigger and bigger and bigger as well. The maximum difference in the wavelength in Compton scattering happens when the scattering angle is 180 degrees, the photon recoils back in the opposite direction, which means then that the change in the wavelength will be 2 times Planck's constant divided by the mass of the scattering particle and divided by the speed of light. Remember that h is equal to 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds for your reference. And of course, the rest mass of an electron would be 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. On the next several videos, we'll see some examples of how we actually calculate the change in the wavelength due to Compton scattering. And that's how it's done.